Geologists can use cosmic rays from space to date past geological events, such as volcanic eruptions and glaciations. When thinking about a place like Yellowstone, with its stunning geological features and unique wildlife, one can't help but wonder how its landscape was formed and what it might hold in the future. For example, when did the Yellowstone caldera form, when did the last volcanic eruption occur, when was the last time Yellowstone was covered by a glacier? To answer these questions, geologists turn to geochronology, which is the study of Earth's history from a time perspective. There are many different types of geochronology techniques that can be used to date geological events. Radiometric dating is commonly used to date past volcanic eruptions by measuring the proportion of parent and daughter material left over after the decay of naturally occurring radioactive atoms in a sample. Argon dating is one of the primary radiometric dating techniques and can be used to date rocks that formed thousands to billions of years ago. Carbon dating is another example of a radiometric technique, but it is limited to samples less than 50,000 years old that contain carbon, which is not found in many deposits. Sometimes, however, geological events do not create new material that can be dated using radiometric techniques, but instead move rocks that were already on the surface to a new location. For example, glacial deposits are a mix of rocks from different places that were moved by advancing glaciers, and hydrothermal explosion deposits are made up of fragments of pre-existing surface rocks that were ejected during steam explosions. In these cases, geologists turn to the skies for answers, using a versatile dating technique called cosmogenic surface exposure dating. This technique determines how long a rock's surface has been exposed to cosmic rays, which are high-energy particles that enter Earth's atmosphere from outer space. Cosmic rays are mostly made up of protons or atomic nuclei that travel through space at nearly the speed of light. These cosmic rays do not originate from our Sun, but rather from exploding stars outside our solar system. When these particles reach Earth, they collide with atoms and molecules in the atmosphere and break them apart, producing a series of secondary cosmic rays. Some cosmic rays make it to Earth's surface, and when they collide with elements in surface rocks, they cause reactions that produce cosmogenic isotopes. The type and amount of cosmogenic isotopes produced depends on the type of material that was exposed to the cosmic rays. By measuring the quantity of cosmogenic isotopes present in a sample, it is possible to determine how long the sample was exposed to the surface, for example, when glacial material or debris from an explosion was deposited. Dating cosmogenic surface exposure is a bit like using the degree of redness on a person's skin to estimate how long they were exposed to the sun. The worse the burn, the longer they were exposed. One interesting and challenging aspect of cosmogenic dating is that the number of cosmic rays that hit Earth's surface depends on a number of factors. For example, a large number of cosmogenic rays are deflected away from Earth by its magnetic field, so your location on Earth is a big factor in how many cosmic rays reach the surface. Altitude is also an important factor. The higher up on Earth, the more cosmic rays hit the surface. Cosmic radiation can also be affected by physical obstacles that act as shields, for cosmic rays, such as large hills next to the sampling site. 
Things like snow cover or vegetation can also reduce the number of cosmic rays that reach the surface. In concept, this is not too different from our analogy of sunburn. You are less likely to get sunburned if you are in the shade than if you are out in the open, or if you are wearing sunscreen. To use cosmogenic dating techniques, geologists must make detailed observations of all of these factors before measuring the abundance of cosmogenic isotopes in a sample using an accelerator mass spectrometer. Although complex, cosmogenic dating has the ability to determine the age of samples that cannot be dated by other methods. A prime example of this is the dating of glacial deposits in Yellowstone, 